Welcome and thank you for standing by. Currently all participants are in listen-only mode. Today's webinar is being recorded and the recording will be posted publicly. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. Now I'd like to turn the call over to your host for today, Faith Whittington. Thanks, Lisa. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar event. We appreciate you joining us today for this webinar on navigating data.census.gov for the 2020 uh, Supplemental Demographic and Housing Characteristics File, or SDHD data. My name is Faith Whittington, and I am your host for today's event. Today, our presenter will provide information on the data available from the 2020 Supplemental Demographic and Housing Characteristics File and how to access it on data.census.gov. I want to thank my Census Bureau colleagues for joining me and helping me to support our speaker today and for making this webinar possible. I will be handing things off to our presenter in just a few moments, but first we want to go over some housekeeping items. Today we will have a panel of experts um, available to answer your questions via the Q&A panel. We would like to encourage participants to use the Q&A panel um, and WebEx to submit questions throughout the presentation. To submit questions, make sure that you use all the all panelist option from the drop down menu. I will also be using the chat panel to send you all helpful information, including instructions, site links, and contact information. So again, for questions, please use the Q&A panel and make sure to use the all panelist option to submit. And use the chat panel to find links and helpful information. At the end of the webinar, we will take your questions through the WebEx audio line. For this portion, we will ask participants to, raise, uh, to use the raise hand icon in WebEx to indicate if you have a question. You will be allowed to come off of mute to ask your question. Just remember uh, when we call your name, please unmute yourself. A quick note, the Q&A session will focus on uh, the platform data.census.gov. We will not be able to go over in depth uh, questions on the 2020 census products, the data collection process, disclosure, avoidance, or methodology. As always, we are recording the webinar today, and all the materials for the training will be available through the Census Academy website. Thank you again for joining us. Now I will introduce our presenter, Maria Valdesera. Thank you. Maria? Thanks, Faith. Hi, everyone, and welcome again to Accessing 2020 Supplemental Demographic and Housing Characteristics File Data on data.census.gov. My name is Maria Valdesera, and I will be your instructor for this webinar. I work in the communications side of the Census Bureau, and we provide assistance to data users with accessing data.census.gov, the microdata access tool, and the Census API. So starting off, with the Supplemental Demographic and Housing Characteristics File, or SDHC. Um, this, the SDHC tables reflect especially complex relationships between the characteristics about households and the people living in them. These complex characteristics supplement the data about households and people available in the DHC product. We often refer to these tables as complex person household join tables or join tables. So some tables are repeated by race and ethnicity. Um, this uh, SDHC file was released on September 19th and is available by nation and state. We do have a press kit available as well with a link provided on the slide. But getting into the subjects that are available in the SDHC, we have average household size by age, household type for the population in households, population under the age of 18 years by relationship and household type, population and families by age, average family size by age, family type and family type and age for own children under 18 years, total population and occupied housing units by tenure, and average household size of occupied housing units by tenure. And the asterisks uh, indicate the table is repeated by major Hispanic origin and race groups. So there are uh, table iterations within this uh, file. 
Now here is an example of what an SDHC table may look like on data.census.gov. This is table PH6, um, which is family type and age for own children under 18 years. So you see we have the estimated count as well as the 90% interval low and 90% interval high. So um, these represent the noise added to the truncated SDHC data. Similar to a margin of error, the credible interval represents a range of values that contain the truncated values with 90% probability. Um, we do have some subject matter experts on the call today if they would like to get more into it once we take questions um, in our Q&A portion, but essentially that is what those tables will look like on the site. Um, I did want to talk a little bit about differential privacy before we get into our demo. So here at the Census Bureau, our mission is to serve as the nation's leading provider of quality data about its people but we must also protect respondent confidentiality. Before we publish data, the Census Bureau must apply a process called disclosure avoidance to protect the confidentiality of respondents. Over time, there has been an increased risk of identifying individuals from the published tables. To mitigate this risk, the Census Bureau implemented a new disclosure avoidance method for the 2020 decennial census. So the new approach adds noise, which are small, random additions and subtractions to the collected data. So we must protect this data under Title 13 of the U.S. Code. Data undergo disclosure avoidance processing to, is, uh, to protect, again, re respondent confidentiality. And um, all 2020 census data products excluding apportionment were protected using differentially private algorithms. So the redistricting file. DHC and demographic profile use the same algorithm, but the detailed DHCA, detailed DHCB, and SDHC each had their own in, uh, algorithm. So I did want to speak a bit about differential privacy before we get into the outline today. So for our demonstration, I'll be showing you uh, a few different ways of finding the SDHC data. Um, we're going to, you know, get started with finding just some general tables. We're going to select multiple geographies and then look at multiple population groups. I'm then going to show you um, some resources that are available for learning more about not only how to find data on data.census.gov, but other decennial pro products as well. And then we'll get into some questions. So getting started, um, we will jump into our example, which is the SDHC tables for household type for the population in households just in the United States. Um, so to find any of the SDHC tables, I do recommend using the first two filters that I'm going to add, as that will um, really help cut out a lot of the other um, search options that you have available. So I'm going to go into data.census.gov, and I am using Google Chrome for this demonstration. For these demonstrations, I do recommend um, using the advanced search since this allows you to view all available search options, as well as view all of the available filters that are, avail that are within the site. Um, so the two filters that I want to add first are my years filter. So I'm going to scroll down this left side panel and select 2020. And then I'm going to select the survey for decennial census. Um, you'll see that if you would uh, look at the original 2020, um, or if you would look at the original decennial census um, filter, you'd see there, there were a lot of different options. Once I used 2020, that actually filtered it down a lot, since these are the only uh, 2020 products available on data.census.gov. The supplemental demographic and housing characteristics file will be located at the bottom of the list, so I'm going to add that as well. And then we can see the available topics that are within the SDHC. So that includes families and living arrangements, housing, populations and people, and race and ethnicity. For this example, I'm going to select housing and then select the general housing filter. So once that is loaded, you'll see the three filters at the top here. Since we are looking at this for the entire United States, we can just uh, click on the search button in the bottom right corner of the screen. And here we'll see the tables that are related to housing from the SDHC. So I'm going to select P2, or excuse me, PH2, which is household type for the population in households. I'm going to collapse both the filter and results panels. And you can see that we have um, 
data on married couple households, cohabiting couple households, and then male and female householders with no spouse or partner present. Um, so I know that this is a big um, table that a lot of people are waiting for, especially with the married couple and uh, cohabitating couple household data. So that is available again at the state and nation level. Now we are going to get into our second example, which is going to be looking at family type and age for own children under 18 years in three different states. So we're going to be looking at New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. So you can compare this data across multiple states. So I'm going to go back into data.census.gov. To start a new search, you can click on the United States Census Bureau logo in the top left corner of the screen. And again, I am going to click on the advanced search to select my filters. So I'm going to select 2020 and then our SDHC from the decennial census product. And again, that really whittles things down um, in terms of the data availability. So um, for this example, I'm going to select my topic which is going to be under families and living arrangements, children, and then I'll just select that children filter there. Then we can add our geographies. So then I'm going to click on the state button, scroll down and select New Jersey, New York, and then Pennsylvania. So those will all be available within the list. Then uh, once I've added all of my filters, I will click on the search button. If you don't see your table initially, we do have a view of 10 um, as the default for um, the table list, but you can switch it to 25 or 50. I'll just switch it to 25 since there are only 11 tables in this search. Um, but the table I was looking for in particular is at the bottom of the list, which is PH6, family type and age for own children under 18 years. So if you collapse the filter and results panel, we'll be able to compare this data uh, over multiple states. So there it is for New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania. And you can see, again, married couple families, cohabitating couple families, male household and female householder with no spouse or partner present family. Um, and then that breaks it up uh, into the own children under 18 years. So now for our next example, I'm going to show you um, how to um, look at some uh, mapping uh, capabilities that we have. So we're going to be looking at average family size for all states in the U.S. Um, so I'm going to show you some of our um, mapping capabilities that you know might be most useful to you. I'm not going to go over every single um, feature that we have just for the sake of time, um, but uh, if you do have any questions on mapping, we will also be providing our contact information uh, at the end of the webinar today. So I'm going to go back into data.census.gov and we will start a new search. Selecting the advanced search here. We'll select our year. 2020. We will select the decennial census supplemental demographic and housing characteristics file. And then we'll select our state. So that'll just be all states within the United States, Puerto Rico, and the island areas. And then for our topic, we're going to go again under families and living arrangements. We'll do families and household characteristics. And then we'll do family size and type. So those will be the four filters that we select in this example. I'm going to click on the search button and we'll select table PH5. Again, this is average family size by age. So if we go to the mapping, um, there are two main ways to get there. You can either click on the maps tab located above the table view or if you click on the more tools button, that allows you more options within the uh, table ribbon, which includes the map button. So I'm going to select maps. And I will just give a moment for it to load. So here we see the average family size by state. Um, it, it does have um, five groups, you know, broken up um, from the darkest um, shades of blue being, you know, the 
uh, family size that is larger, and then it goes down to the lighter blue with the smaller family size or smallest small smaller average family size rather rather. Um, so if we click on the drop down here, this is where you'll be able to change your um, variables. Um, I will say that you know this this table is pretty small. Um, but you know, if you're looking at uh, you know table pH two, for example, as we looked at in a previous example, um, then you can select you know maybe uh, the variable for the female householder with no spouse present. Um, but this is how you will select your variables. Say you wanted to look at um, the total under 18 years instead of 18 years and over, you can do that, and then it'll. Excuse me. I think it might be experiencing a defect, so we are going to, there we go. So we're looking at, we'll just look at 18 years and over right now, but you'll see that once I um, switch that variable, you can see that it shows at the top there, um, and then it um, updates with those new statistics. So you can change the variable using that drop down here. Um, we also do have the ability to change the colors of the map, which can be um, useful if you need them to, you know, match a certain aesthetic. We do have se sequential order, uh, diverging as well as qualitative. So you can change it to match any of the color schemes that you were looking for. Um, we also have the ability to select other geographies within the map. If you had only selected, say, you know, one or two states, you can draw a box, a circle, or a lasso, and then add different different states to your map as well. Um, then, if you want to change the number of data classes that are present, this does default to five data classes, but they are also available. You can change the number of data classes as well as have the breaks be natural, quantile, equal interval, or manual breaks. I also just wanted to show quickly the more tools. Um, so this also includes the print button. This allows you to get a PDF of the map, which includes the image of the map, the variable that's being mapped, as well as the legend and the associated table notes. Um, speaking of which, if you do want to look at the table notes, we also have a notes button. Um, this provides, you know, technical documentation for the SDHC, uh, as well as um, the sourcing information and some map notes as well. And then finally, if you would like to share this map, you can click on the share button and this will provide you with a link to the map as well as how to share it via social media. So those were just some of the map highlights that I wanted to go over. Um, the last uh, set of examples that I wanted to show was how to select multiple population groups. So for this example, we'll be looking at the total population in occupied housing units by tender, or excuse me, by tenure for race groups in Arizona. So we're going to go back into the site and start a new search. I'll click on the advanced search once again and select 2020, then our supplemental DHC, and then for this example, we're going to be uh, selecting our state of Arizona, so I'm going to select state and then Arizona, and then we'll select two um, topics filters, so the first is going to be housing, occupancy characteristics, and then we'll land on the final occupancy characteristics filter. And then we'll select race and ethnicity, and then just the general race and ethnicity filter as well. So that'll provide us with those table iterations. So I'm going to click on the search button. And you'll see that the PH7 iterations go down uh, all the way. Um, they are available by white alone, black or African American alone, American Indian or Alaska Native alone, um, and then uh, Asian alone. House and these are all by householders. Um, and this is Native Hawaiian and other Pacific Islander uh, alone households. If we expand this too, I can show. This is some other race alone householder, and that is the table iteration. So again, um, 
it'll specifically tell you the universe that is available. So this is the population and occupied housing units with a householder who is white alone. So please keep that in mind when using these table iterations. I did also wanna show some table features once it is all loaded up. So you can collapse the results panel here as well. Just gonna try and refresh it. We might, it might just be my browser today. There we go. Um, so you can see that this is only available with the uh, DEC Supplemental Demographic and Housing Characteristics file from the 2020 decennial census. Um, but if we did have other, other iterations from different years, that these, this is where these would be available. You can also add other topics filters, or geog excuse me, geography, topics, and codes filters in this uh, table ribbon, as well as the filter panel on the left side of the screen. I also wanted to let you know how you can um, export or download these tables. So there are three ways to do this on the site. You can either hit the Excel export. This will provide you with a um, more um, presentation ready um, uh, format, I'll say. There are um, there is an information tab that provides you with, you know, identifying information um, for this table. So it'll provide you with the table ID, um, the URL from the from the site itself. Um, it'll provide you with the, you know, geographies that you use um, and then the associated table notes. And then once you look at the um, once you look at the table itself, it'll provide you with a view very, very similar to what you see on the site. Um, so it'll be um, very readable. Um, the second way to download is through the CSV. Um, so that is available. Um, it does not provide you with the information tab, so it's a little bit different than the Excel export, and it's just a bit more compressed. So it'll still provide you with the variables in the rows and then the um, geographies in the columns, but again, it just looks uh, a little bit different than the Excel export. Then we have the zip download, and this is more optimized for machine reading. So it'll provide you with the variable codes, um, the geographic identifiers, um, and again, it's more for um, that machine reading. It's a flat file. So those are the three ways that you can either export or download the table from the site. Then if we click on more tools, we can see that we also have a citation button. So if you would like to cite, um, if you are using this and you are using it, um, you know, and like to give us credit as we often encourage, um, we do have the citations available directly on data.census.gov. So you can copy them directly. And we have multiple different styles, as you can see at the top there. And then if we just go into the more tools, the other one that I wanted to show that's, that might be relevant is the um, API button. So this provides you with an, a data link for the API. So this will take you directly to the API um, with the table, with the geography that you've selected. And then we also have the metadata link for the SDHC provided as well, if anybody on this call is using the API. So those are the um, table elements that I did want to specifically highlight in today's webinar. Um, I did want to also show that we have a lot of resources for learning more about the SDHC as well as just census data in general. Um, so we do have that press kit that I mentioned available. So this includes um, the Understand the SDHC blog post. It also has the pre-release webinar recording, which was done last week, as well as technical documentation, how-to materials, and related helpful links. So please check that out if you are able. On uh, the data.census.gov side, we do have some newly published uh, um, video tutorials that are available for accessing the 2020 SDHC data on data.census.gov. So I do have um, QR codes provided there. Um, we also have the links, and then we also have um, how-to materials, which include um, not only those video tutorials, but some PDFs as well that outline how to find the data. Um, and then for the um, decennial census data products, um, we do have uh, on census.gov the ability to view uh, more information about that. So 
can definitely definitely recommend we have guidance for data users, the data itself, as well as you know the library, um, other um, press kits and technical documentation that you can parse through if there is any um, you know questions about the 2020 data products because. Um, uh, you know, it's a lot of products that are available and, you know, we've uh, been releasing them over the last few years, so we do have that information available for everyone. Um, I also wanted to mention that we have some guidance for accessing this data through the API if anyone is interested. Um, we do also have guidance for developers as well as a developers forum so that those two links are included. Um, but we, you know, have a user guide as well as video tutorials specifically for the API. So I did want to mention that as well. And then if you would like to sign up for email updates, um, which includes data.census.gov updates, as well as our monthly newsletter um, that is available at the link provided on the slide. If you also go to our resources page, which I'll be linking, um, uh, or that link will be provided in a, in a, um, in a future slide, um, that is also available. Um, through the resources page. So you can go to the newsletter, you can see that we provide them monthly and that gives you information on, you know, what's new with the site, changes and fixes that we've made, as well as the featured video tutorials and upcoming events like webinars. And I did just want to plug that if anybody on this call um, does you know, have any questions or feedback on data.census.gov to please reach out to us at census.data at census.gov. Um, we are happy to, you know, answer any questions that you have. Um, and if you do have any feedback, we do take that to our developers. So our, it really does depend on the feedback that we receive from data users and the changes that we make um, to make things more user friendly. We also do um, set up, you know, phone calls and things like that. So if you'd like to ask your questions or provide your feedback that way, we'd be happy to do so. Again, you can reach out to us at census.data and census.gov. Um, but I'm going to pass it back over to Faith before I wrap up with the last few slides. Thank you, Maria. In just a few moments, we will begin our question and answer session. Today, we'll, we will be taking your questions over the WebEx audio. If you have questions related to today's content, we invite you to use the raised hand icon located next to your name in WebEx. When we call your name, please unmute yourself to ask a question. Before we move on to the q and I'd like to invite you all uh, to give us your thoughts on today's webinar through a press webinar survey form. What that means is the evaluation survey will appear in the browser automatically when you exit the webinar. If you have any notes for us to help us improve these webinars, or if you have any ideas on other topics you'd like to see covered in the future, please take a moment to fill out the survey once we wrap up this webinar. If you have questions remaining after our session concludes, or if you prefer to email us your questions, please feel free to reach out to any of the email boxes listed here. And if you are a member of the media, uh, you can contact the Public Information Office at the email provided below. For the general, uh, excuse me, for general data.census.gov questions from the public or for training requests, please reach out to the Center for Inter Enterprise Dissemination. Uh, and both emails are listed on this slide. With that, let's go ahead and see if anyone has any questions for us at this time. Anyone who would like to ask a question, please select the raised hand icon so um, and go ahead and queue up. And while you're queuing up, I will just also plug the 2020 census data product um, question email address that is also available on this slide. So that includes uh, the 2020.census.paperwork at census.gov. And again, um, if there are any questions for the meet um, from the media that can be reached at PIO at census.gov. And again, while we are queuing up, I did want to just again reiterate our resources page as well as our email for um, uh, any feedback or training requests. And then finally, the last thing that I wanted to um, uh, show you 
everybody before we dive into questions is the data dissemination and training branch. So um, this is um, a branch that we work with pretty frequently. They have what we call data dissemination specialists um, and they provide uh, training all across the country. So um, you can request a free training for your organization either in person or via webinars and they are highly skilled um, with uh, a lot of different census products, not just data.census.gov. Um, so if you do have any um, interest in you know, contacting your uh, you know, state's DDS, um, that is available at census.askdata at census.gov, or you can contact them uh, at 1-844-ASK-DATA. So I, you know, we really love our DDSs and we'd love to um, help out any data users who might um, like a special training request on that end as well. Um, so I'm just going to switch back to our webinar evaluation slide and see if there are any questions that can be asked over the line. Did we have anyone queued up, Lisa or Faith? I'm not seeing anybody on my side right now, Maria. Um, how about you, Lisa? Um, I do not see anyone as yet. Okay, great. We'll just give people a few more moments. Also, if there are any uh, questions in the chat that might be um, good for reading out, I'm happy to um, you know, hear it. I also know that um, they have, I know that our subject matter experts have also been answering them as well. Um, so if you know they want to come off mute as well and, and reiterate anything for the full group, I'm fine with that as well. I just can't see the chat. Um, I did see a question come through that asked what geographies are available. Again, just to reiterate for the SDHC, it is nation and state only. Um, I know that for the other detailed demographic and housing characteristics files, there is more geographic availability. But again, for the SDHC, this is nation and state only. So that is definitely um, good for repeating. Um, were there any, I thought I might have seen a raised hand come through. I don't know if. Yes, um, Max. All right, can we unmute? Max, you can go ahead and ask a question. Max, we are not unable to hear you. Yes, I think he's having problems with his, yeah, let me go ahead and unmute him one more time. Okay. Okay. Max is unmuted. Hi, sorry, I guess, yeah, I asked my question. I guess I was muted. Um, so uh, I had also had a question about the geographies. Um, I'm, I'm interested in like, I guess, sort of more like at the county level, uh, so comparing like smaller geographies within a county. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I guess I don't know if this, if this data set will eventually have that, or if there are other comparable, uh, data sets that I should be looking at. Um, and if that's outside the scope of this survey, that's, that's fine. I understand. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the question. I think I I'm not aware of any other, um, geographies that will be released for this, um, products specifically. Um, I know that the 2020 um, page itself has a breakdown of all of the geographic availability and, you know, what each um, each product has within it. Um, I would definitely do some exploring, especially if you're looking at decennial census products, there might be something that is more suited to what you're looking for. But yeah, with, with the SDHC, it is more limited in terms of geography. So I would definitely explore more, and we do have a lot of those 2020 products on data.census.com. Data yeah, and um, I was just gonna add on to that. Um, so uh, the SDHC is only available at nation and state, but um, as you may know, uh, three of the tables within the, the SDHC are average tables. So you get average household size by certain characteristics. Um, and we did release another resource uh, to help data users because um, there's another 2020 census data product. It's called the demographic and housing characteristics file. That's DHC for short. Um, and although there's some limitations with creating those averages from that data product, it is possible. Um, there's a lot of different ways to kind of create them. Um, the DHC does go um, lower level of geographies, some tables all the way down to census block, um, but you could definitely get tracked there. Um, and so although we did not produce averages as part of that, and the official averages are in the SDHC for nation and state, 
Um, if you do need substate um, estimates for averages, uh, you could kind of look at that resource that we provided to kind of uh, see some recommendations that we have. I can go ahead and post that link in the chat um, if you're interested in looking at that resource. Um, but yeah, otherwise the SDHC is just available for nation and state. Um, I also just wanted to answer a few other questions verbally um, in case not everybody has access to the chat. Um, if you want to get the count of people living in renter occupied housing units by race ethnicity that is available within the SDHC for the nation and state levels, that's gonna be table PH7. And, and to get it by race ethnicity, you would look at for table like PH7A, PH7B, all the way through PH7I. So for that, um, to get it by race ethnicity, you would have to search for those multiple tables with A through I at the end. Um, when we were looking at, you know, um, what data was going to be in each of the tables, uh, we first went back to the 2010 census um, and we kind of started with those table shells and we did have to make a few updates to the table shells um, based on, you know, uh, how the content had changed, how we asked questions differently. For example, um, updates to the relationship question, and then we also made a few additional changes to the table shells um, based on the privacy accuracy trade off. Um, and then the final question that somebody asked that I wanted to respond to was, oh, we do provide documentation for the subject definition. So if you're wondering uh, what do we mean when we say like occupied housing unit um, or some of those other terms. Um, in the SDHC technical documentation, which I put a link in the chat for that, uh, if you go down to Appendix B, way at the end, um, you're going to see uh, a list of subject definitions. Uh, but if you have any additional questions about that, you can always reach out. Thanks so much, Alexandra. And we do have another question from Johanna. Please unmute yourself. Johanna? Um I'm new to a lot of this, but I love statistics and um, I have a background in psychology. Um, <clears throat> what is distressing to me is the, the use of so many acronyms. It really shuts down the ability of a person who's new to something to understand what's going on when things are referred to by initials or acronyms. Uh, and if you could just give um, like a dictionary or a, a translation of them somewhere um, available always on the side, that would be really helpful to me at least. Yeah, but thank you. That is, yeah, that is definitely some, uh, a bit of feedback that we have gotten in the past. Um, so you're not the only one. We do try okay. to make things more accessible. Yeah. Um, I will say that we have new, yeah, we have a lot of newer data users as well that, you know, are just joining the site for the yeah, first time. Because this really is the basis of making good policy decisions um, nationally and locally is we need, the, we need information and this is a good place to get it. And we need to encourage people to use this kind of information when they're making decisions. And often they don't, I, I suspect. So, and thank you for taking my question. Yeah, of course. Thank you again for um, the feedback and, um, you know, we'll definitely pass that along. I do not see any other questions queued up. I don't know if anybody else, um, if Lisa or Faith sees any. I do, I do not. I do not. All right, well, I did want to just thank everybody for attending the webinar today. Again, I am going to just provide our contact info here. Um, if you do have any other feedback or questions for us, uh, you know, either on this product or other census products that are available, um, you know, we can always pass them um, along to the correct subject matter experts. Um, so again, I would like to thank everybody for attending today's webinar and um, hope everyone has a great rest of their day. Um, I'll pass it back over to you, Faith, while I leave this slide up. All right, with that being said, I wanna say uh, thank you all so much for joining us here today. And um, I'll go ahead and throw things over to Lisa to close us out. This concludes today's webinar. Thank you for joining us today. You may disconnect at this time.